Okay, there's the two rebates going. Now we'll start to put the moulding in. And what I want to do with this is have an overlapping sort of a way formation. So I want it high at the back and then cutting way here, cutting way here, cutting way here, cutting way here, and then I'll put a mitre right on this corner. Now with this, I want the curve to be going uphill. So instead of starting at the back here, like I did with the previous one, I'm actually going to turn the plane this way, which will take from here back. I don't want to flatten the plane totally from this angle to this. I want to keep it well, within that range, about a five degree range. Now, once I've done that one, move on to the next one. Same, same. Put it in there, follow it back. There we go. The thing I love about moulding planes and rebate planes, round hollows, whatever, you can go at your own pace. I did a lot of routering during the week and believe me, I just wanted to get back to using these. Oh, so much quieter and obedient. If you go a little bit wonky to it, it really doesn't matter. It'll just all add to the charm. Now I'm into the third groove, which is the third one. As you can see, that wasn't deep enough and it actually ran off. So I'm going to have to manually steer this for the first couple of times. If you do have um, snipe bills, this is an ideal opportunity for snipe bills, but I promise this would be one plane and that's all we're going to use. And on this edge one, I'm just by eye, I'm just going to put a chamfer on it and I'm using my fingers underneath the plane like that to act as a fence. And also this finger here, I can put into this groove here. So I've actually got two points of reference. You only have to do a couple and then it'll find its own, own level. Just starting to now. All right, that's that one. Next one. Exactly the same thing. When you do it, start off slowly, and once you get depth, then you can go a bit faster. one up here see how close we're looking that's pretty close and to give you an idea of how much mess I've made so far so as you can tell not that much of a mess and you also saw them on rubber mats and I've got a piece of canvas or a painter's drop sheet underneath that 
with a vinyl membrane in between and then the other part of the drop sheet underneath that. So anything that drops here won't go through to the carpet and all those shavings, what I don't pick up by hand, I don't know if you saw the little bit yellow vacuum cleaner, that'll pick it up. Now we'll get on to a couple of mitres. I actually think you should get something like this. It doesn't have to be this particular one, but something that's going to saw mitres accurately and quietly. Failing that, if you haven't got one or you don't want to get one, then we can go back to what we made in a previous video, which is the shooting board. So obviously with this one, you would then cut as close as you can to 45 degrees, put it into this slot here. Oh, please, Bob, what's it doing? Oh, live TV, you gotta love it. But put it in there and then you shoot it and that'll give you your 45. But believe me, the shooting board and an ordinary saw would do just as well. It's just, this is quicker and I've got it. Now I'm gonna cut the 45 degrees, but make sure that the shortest part, the pointy bits on the outside, the shortest part is with the rebate. And that's the wrong way around, so I'm just gonna change this around to 45. I'll just move that up as a depth stop. That way when I put the other piece up, it's going to cut at the same place. And that's it. All these solid bits go into the bin. And a bit of sawdust we've got here, we'll just suck that up. Now we'll see how it looks when we put it together. Now, that for my money is a pretty good fit. I'll show you how, if you don't get a nice fit like that, you can shoot them. Bench dog. And for those of you who missed it, this shooting board I made a couple of videos ago and I think it's in five parts, you can check it out there and it'll show you how to make this from scratch. This is the 45, tap it home, grab a plane, bit of oil on that, bit on the side, pop it into the shooting board, have it hanging over just a little bit and then you just give it a, a couple of passes like that cleans up beautifully. And these are spot on. So that's it, it's a shooting board. If you want to know how to make it, remember, check that video out. And um, I know I keep plugging them, but H&T Gordon Plains, solid timber planes, beautiful Australian timber. This one's Gigi, by the way. Great thing about working inside is, I needed some baking paper so I could do this glue up and the kitchen's just behind me so I just shot in there and grabbed some. It's a new roll too, I think that might end up in the shed. And if I use stuff from the kitchen, that means I don't have to buy it for the workshop. And it comes out of housekeeping. How good is that? All right. Honestly, I can't rave about this clamping system enough for it. It's absolutely brilliant. It's no Bex clamping system. If you've got a bucket in your bench too, with a little bit of water in it, not only is it good for Bob so you can have a drink, but just to clean up any of this glue that sort of snuck through. When it's dried, I'll show you a really super special effects wax that will change what this frame looks like now into something that really is super special. And then I'll show you something else that you can boost whatever it is you put in there. So we'll just wait for that to dry. <laughs> 